Hello again, welcome back to Big Screen Small Talk. Uh, I have more thoughts and feelings about things I like to watch, which I, for some unknown reason, feel the need to implant into your heads as well. Uh, so without further ado, enjoy! Today I will be talking a, about three TV shows, as well as a certain trailer which has made its way online very recently. <laughs> Let's start with the big news. This morning I looked on my phone to discover that the first official trailer for Avengers Age of Ultron has emerged, and this time official is used in the traditional sense of the word, unlike so many YouTube videos which confuse the word official with the word fan-made. Also, this film isn't even coming out until next summer, that's an early trailer. The Hobbit trailers don't even come out until six months before the film. Good on you, Avengers. You know that the film fans need their fiction fix. Let's kick things off with the title character of the film, Ultron. He looks like a badass, he talks like a badass. In all senses, he appears to be a badass, and he is also apparently a big fan of Pinocchio. If you don't believe me, go watch the trailer. You will see from the soundtrack the things he said. He really loves Pinocchio. You can just imagine the fan fiction. The Avengers are there, which is always helpful in an Avengers movie. They've got to stop Ultron. Ultron is evil, and there is a sense of impending doom. What could be more enjoyable than that? This film is on my most anticipated list of 2015. Now, Gotham. As you can see, I'm wearing a Batman t-shirt. I can assure you this is a coincidence. I just happen to be wearing this t-shirt today. I also happen to be doing a review of Gotham today. After seeing the first episode of Gotham, I thought it was enjoyable, but I wasn't completely sure uh, how much I was going to get into it. And then I saw the second episode, and I've got to say, it's now up there on the things that I am watching. Because the second episode just pulled me right back in there, without a doubt better than the pilot. I was worried that Gary Oldman had left too big a shoes for Ben McKenzie to fill, but I was wrong on that point. Ben McKenzie is impeccable as Jim Gordon, Robin Taylor is impeccable as the Penguin, I'll come back to him in a minute. But there is one casting choice that kind of I'm not too sure about. Remember Michael Caine as Alfred? The warm, wise, gentle-hearted old butler who looked after young Bruce and had some of the greatest lines ever in the Dark Knight trilogy? Well, Gotham gives you this guy. Sean Pertwee's Alfred feels very cold and distant and grumpy. Honestly, the Gotham version of Alfred feels like kind of a dick. Speaking of the Dark Knight trilogy, there were some points in the first episode which felt kind of like I was just watching Batman Begins again, but on a good point, uh, Gotham is using easter eggs in a good way. We've already seen quite a lot of iconic villains popping up here and there. Already we have seen the Riddler, we've seen Poison Ivy, we've seen Catwoman, who's... Well, she's not actually Catwoman yet, she's more like Cat 13 year old girl. But that doesn't have the same ring to it. Carmine Falcone, who for some reason in Gotham they all pronounce it as Falcone. I thought it was Falcone. In addition, it is possible that we have seen the Joker as the young comedian who was in Fish Mooney's nightclub in the first episode. This is mere speculation at this point, I have no idea if that was a Joker or how that's going to turn out. And of course, how can I talk about villains without mentioning Penguin or Oswald Cobblepot, if you prefer? He began episode one as kind of a wet lettuce, you know, he was into the crime, but he was kind of bullied by his criminal peers, and now- Oh! Second episode, bam, he is full out villain mode now. He has killed at least three people. He's just on a villain rampage throughout the whole episode, and that is so awesome to see. Not going out is what I'm doing today. And it's also what I watched on BBC iPlayer this morning. The British sitcom starring Lee Mack has returned to grace our screams with witty one-liners and farcical situations which are hilarious. Last series had a really strong start with the rabbit episode, which was, like, top of the game, but then the quality slowly declined throughout the series. I was hoping for a bit more oomph this series, and honestly the first episode didn't really give it. It was funny, undoubtedly. Lee Mack was on form, as were Katie Wicks and Sally Breton as Daisy and Lucy, respectively. The episode revolved around Lee and Lucy being mugged by some teenagers and Lucy's knitting got stolen, which uh, opened the gates for a joke about knitting muggers following a pattern. I think the thing I really miss about the show is Tim Vine's character, who was called Tim Adams. Uh, he was my favourite character in the show, I'm going to be honest, and he's not in it anymore 
which is maybe why I'm not as enthusiastic about it as I was when I was watching the first few seasons. That being said, it's still worth watching, and I'm definitely going to continue watching this series. And I have seen in the trailer that Hugh Dennis is going to be in it, and Hugh Dennis is a good actor. He's a very funny man, so that should be entertaining to see, even if he's only in it for one episode. I'd like to end this episode of Big Screen Small Talk on a lighter note, but instead I'm going to talk about The Walking Dead. The human killing zombies and the zombie killing humans and the human killing humans are all back. And let me just say, that first episode, I wanted action, I got action. That first episode was so intense, there was so much going on, and so shocking as well. I was not expecting what happened at Terminus. I have this friend who also watches The Walking Dead, he's called Tristan, and during season 4 we were discussing where we think it was going to go, and I just said to him, I think it would create a really interesting dynamic if the group ran into a cannibal. Well I guess I'm psychic. At Terminus there's a whole bunch of cannibals who are out to get the group, and these are going to be our new villains. Now the governor, was an awesome villain. David Morrissey did him so well, and these guys are going to be his replacement. So far they're doing a pretty good job. At the end of episode 1 it got a bit emotional. Daryl and Carol reunited, which was really nice to see, and Rick forgave Carol for what she did in series 4. Now everyone's together, and we don't have to keep track of where each individual semi-group is. It's just one big group now. Yay! Everyone's gonna go up to Washington and Eugene, if you don't know who Eugene is, he's the doctor who was stupid enough to shoot a bullet at the petrol tank. Eugene is going to cure the walkers with some bacterial thing, yet yeah, it's not gonna work. Also, I'll try not to spoil too much, but there was a cliffhanger ending at the end of episode 2. One of the main characters finds themselves in a situation that no one really wants to be in and the new villains are involved. Thank you for watching this episode of Big Screen Small Talk, which was kind of more like Small Screen Small Talk, because I was just talking about TV, apart from the Avengers at the start. But anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye!